So our old pal Robert Light of control, 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 out of control, 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 and lust, 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 Jesus wants your lust, 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 lust fame, has this video about hating your family for Jesus. Now, you might immediately think that that's based on my interpretation or something, but that's what it's actually called. Yeah. Such a loving religion. The whole world lives for themselves. Well, hello to you too, Robert. They live to provide for their offspring, for their wife, for their family. That's not really the same thing as living for yourself. That's actually kind of living for others, but okay. They live to make their lives better. They live to make their families' lives better. Some people do. I mean, there's a point where living for your family's well-being becomes destructive, you know, when you start screwing other people over to make that happen. But otherwise, it's a pretty noble goal. Putting in hard work to get your family to a better place is a great thing. Especially if you live in a slum or something, and you're working so your kid can get a decent education and have a shot at a better life than you grew up with. That's a wonderful thing. So, what you gonna say about it? That Jesus is what motivates them to stop being lazy, pick up some tools, and start fixing their life up, or what? Unbelievers live so that their children can have better lives on this earth. Oh, unbelievers do. Okay, so this isn't gonna be a Jesus likes hard work type video. From the least to the greatest, that's what people do. Yeah, that's pretty much how we managed to get by as a species so far. But how does that relate to Jesus? But Jesus said that if you follow him, you've got to hate even your own family for his sake. Well, he sounds pleasant. You know, hate's kind of a strong word, though. Will Jesus settle for, say, mild annoyance? Maybe a sort of tepid peak? You see, when you follow Jesus, you're no longer concerned about being preoccupied with what this world wants and lives for. Providing for their family and getting a better life. That's all the world lives for. Okay, um... Hey, you remember all those stories of parents who let their kids starve to death while they were playing World of Warcraft? Well, apparently Christianity's the same thing. Give your kid an old potato sack to wear, shove it in a cardboard box, and make it subsist on maggots from the dumpster, and pray to Jesus to tell him just how much you seriously hated that stupid kid today. Oh, but its birth was such a blessing. Thank you, Jesus. If someone's in a poor country, they want to have a better life like those in the rich countries. Those in the rich countries want to have a better life and become millionaires. Everybody strives for themselves, for their own family, for their own offspring. Okay, look, if this were all you said in this video, then to some extent I think I'd be right on board there with you. If someone's really poor, I completely understand the will to pour themselves fully into providing something better for their family, and it's very, very admirable. If someone has to work two jobs just to keep food on the table and give the whole family decent housing, but instead they choose to work three jobs just so they can put a little money aside for their baby's future education, I think that is incredible. I don't see why you're shaming poor people for having that kind of ambition, but when it comes to wealthy people wanting to be wealthier, I mean, they're more than welcome to do it if they want to, although preferably not at someone else's expense. You know, if they're doing it honestly, I don't consider it any sort of a crime or anything. But I do wonder if some of those people who spend all day every day working and pulling in millions just so they can keep up with the Joneses, you know, wouldn't be happier if they just retired once they had enough and enjoyed their limited time with the people they probably started out doing it all for. But who knows, maybe I'm totally wrong. Maybe it's what they totally love to do and it's just... That's what their hobby is. Whatever, to each their own. But they don't live for God. You know, even if you'd stopped here, I'd find what you're saying a little bit silly, but I wouldn't have that much of a problem with it. Like, for example, if you said, take time away from the constant striving to talk to God each day, or something like that. Regardless of what you thought you meant, in practice, you would basically just be promoting something like meditation. You know, taking a few minutes aside from all the stress just to get your thoughts together. But instead, you're promoting, well, you know. They don't fear his name. Well, if you wanted them to fear his name, you should have chosen a scarier name. God just doesn't do it for me. God. Very woody name. Actually, if I were to picture someone named God, I'd picture kind of a lanky guy, mid-40s, receding hairline, maybe in a Best Buy uniform. But he doesn't work in a cool department like TVs, he's more like in inkjet printers. When you, as a professing believer in God, a professing Christian, Strive after the world to provide and seek the good things like the unbelievers do. You're just the same as them and are faithless. How? I mean, faith is just belief based on feels instead of, you know, not stupid reasons. I mean, sure, maybe you can say, hey, dickheads, you're Christianing wrong. Do it my way. Hate your family. You know, unless you like burning in hell. 
But to just assert like that, that they actually have no faith in God's existence, well, now you're just throwing a tantrum and kicking people out of your club because they won't act exactly like you do. I have no idea why that's supposed to be novel, because that's your entire channel, actually, and it's why I like you so much. So... Aw, just keep on being you, Robert. Focused on the things that are perishing and will pass away and give you nothing before God when you come to stand before him. You know, I really think I understand what you're trying to say here. I try to take the good that I can find in every worldview and throw away the bad, and this is one of the very few things in Christianity that could almost be a positive message if it hadn't been used to create yet another twisted demand for submission, the repulsion of outsiders, and the further immersion into the cult. The core of the message, I think, is stop spending all your time worrying about what society tells you you're supposed post to want. Figure out what really matters to you and focus on that. And if that's where it stopped, I think it'd be a good message. I know that a lot of people are made completely miserable by the cultural obsession with fancy toys and giant houses and new cars every couple years and whatever, where they let themselves get completely trapped in the mindset of, I need this, I need that, without stopping to think that maybe what they really need is to just learn to stop feeling that need, and stop spending all their money on fucking bullshit, which keeps them trapped working in a career they hate, with mortgages they won't finish paying until they have one foot in the grave. I fell into that trap myself. When you're born and raised in a culture that prioritizes that sort of thing, and you're blasted from all sides by commercial messages telling you you need this and you want that, and you won't be cool unless you do that or buy this, and when all your friends and schoolmates and co-workers are immersed in the same kind of culture and believing it, it's indoctrination, just the same way Christianity is, and it can also be really hard to escape from. And just as with Christianity, not everyone thrives in that kind of culture. Some people seem to, although since everyone wears a mask, it's hard to know the truth without interrogating them. But some people, like me and apparently like you, really don't thrive under it. And plenty of us have figured that out with no need for Jesus' help. And in that sense alone, we have common ground. But you take it to an idiotic extreme. Bob, your family is not the same thing as the latest consumer trend. Your kid is not a fucking Furby. If there's anything that's important, it's your family. And if you live in a slum and your kid's doomed to continue through the cycle of misery that started generations before you were even born, it is absolutely not a bad thing to make sacrifices and work hard to change that. If anything, it's charitable, and I thought Christians were all about charity, but it seems you're not. No, I mean, fuck your family, right? They're not gonna get you God reward tokens. You might not get to visit the big amusement park in the sky. Now yeah, sure, maybe there is a bit of a problem when people selfishly live just to pile up more wealth for themselves and their families, but those people have nothing on you. You'll casually throw away anyone you don't see as a useful tool in your entirely self-centered quest to reach heaven. You got a problem with people who live only for themselves, eh? Well, they don't come any worse than you. When you come to stand before God empty-handed, and you've got nothing to show him, you will be cast away. So what am I supposed to show him? Apparently not that I was good to other people, not that I was charitable and kind, not that I cared about my family and tried to make a better life for my kids. So if not that, then what? That I loved him so much that I hated my kids and let them half starve and die of fucking malaria while I was busy praying? Well, so be it then. Cast me away. I have no desire to be anywhere near someone who demands that of me. As a worthless branch, because you lived for yourself. You lived for your family. You lived for getting a better life. You lived for holidays and fun, but you didn't live for Jesus Christ. A better life is not a synonym for holidays and fun, you fucking dolt. But I always enjoy it when a religious person comes right out and says fun is haram. I mean, really, what value is there in kids having fun? That would make them far too well-adjusted and stable. And then why would they bother with your misanthropic religion, right? Better to lock them in a cupboard, pin their eyes open, and make them stare at a Bible 24 hours a day. Make sure they get good and fucked up so they can't function outside the cult. Besides, it's not like anything you would ever do with them would be fun for you anyway, because you hate them. Can't have fun with someone you hate. And as we've already heard, all that really matters in your belief system is how things are for you. When you come to live for Jesus Christ and realize these truths and strive to bear fruit for the kingdom of God, then your focus is on a different thing. You're no longer interested in pursuing better lives for your family. Instead, you trust God to provide for the things that you need in this earth and what they need. 
Well, I'm sure that's easy for you to say, but it's not so easy for everyone. When you can't afford food, let alone a camera and a computer and an internet connection, praying to God isn't gonna cut it. When the economy's working in your favor, there's no challenge in sitting on your ass and engaging in the idle pursuits of the rich, like pretending that it's God and not your healthy bank account that's what's getting you through the day. But in hard times, it becomes much more clear that no matter how much or how little faith you have, the only person who's actually gonna get shit done for you is you. And you do his will. You can't enter heaven if you don't do his will and put him first. You mean put yourself first, think about it. If you really put God first, you wouldn't be doing things because you want to go to heaven. You'd be doing it for him, not for you. But instead, you're starting out with, I want to go to heaven, and your conclusion is, therefore I should put God first, because that's how I get in. God is not your first consideration in this situation. You are. The only way into the kingdom of God is a life being a disciple of Christ, having faith in his name. Except you do that, you will end up in the eternal fire that burns without end. Along with everybody else who just lived for themselves, were focused on the things of this life. Well then, Robert, I'll see you in hell, because you're living for absolutely nobody but yourself, God included. And in the meantime, kindly go fuck yourself. The people I care about are what really matter to me, and if you think they're just more worthless things of this life, and that focusing on them is such a terrible crime that I deserve to suffer infinite torture, well, you and your God can both eat my dick. Jesus said, do not put your focus on and be worried about what you will eat, drink, where, what your family will have. Again, easy for you to say. You know, you seem like a real lonely, miserable prick. Try having a child and then imagining him or her lying in bed starving to death because you refused to focus on what you were going to eat the next day and instead spent the day praying to Jesus and trusting in him to provide for you instead of actually putting the work in and providing for your kid. Maybe you'll get your priorities straight then. Rather, put your mind on the kingdom of God and look above. Put these things first in your life and the righteousness of God. No, I'm not that self-centered. I'm not going to set my sights on some personal wish and allow my family to suffer on the off chance that maybe I'll get what I want at their expense. There's no way I'm ever going to take your advice to focus on nothing but my own gain. And I hope nobody else will either. That attitude of distilled selfishness causes obscene amounts of suffering in this world, and I hope that we as a species can smarten the fuck up before too many more people have to be the victims of it. And he will provide you with all you need. Oh, good. If I just hate my family and care about nobody but myself and nothing but my own personal gain, God will provide me with enough to live. Maybe. Or not. And if I do a really, really good job hating everyone, he might even give my family enough, too. Well, I don't really care about that, but, you know, I guess if he wants to, it's okay. Or maybe he'll just make them get sick and die. Either way's fine. It's all part of his plan, so... I didn't really need them anyway, right? He must have a reason for killing them off. And it's gotta be all about me, because otherwise it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, maybe he decided that I didn't hate them enough to get into heaven? So what I really needed was for them to fuck off and die so I could focus better on getting my big prize without the distraction of, you know, love and happiness and all that kind of shit. Is that what you are doing? Absolutely not. You have fun living for hate and greed, and I'm gonna go to the park with my wife and daughter. Bye. If you like my videos, consider supporting me on Patreon. And if you want to see more videos, subscribe to my channel and thumb up this video. See you soon.